Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Welcome to our uh, monthly tech meet for Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Uh, today we will be uh, overhauling a water pump that has already been removed from an 85 Corniche. Today we're gonna, I'm going to be overhauling a water pump. Now, for the sake of time, the video, we're not, I didn't, I'm not going to take it all off in front of you and then put it all back on because I'm assuming most people can handle that part. But overhauling the pump itself is tricky. I've had a lot of mechanics and I have damaged a number of these trying to put them together. Um, this is off of an 85 like I said. When they went to the fuel injection, silver spirit and spirits, they changed the water pump a lot. The, the bearings and the seals and all that are way different from the shadow. Um, so there's, it has some inherent problems. So this right here mounts up to the engine and uh, the fan and pulley mounts on here, so the belt turns that part. And on the back side, inside a cavity on the front cover, this impeller spins and it sucks water in and pushes it out. So that's how it works. What type of gasket is used? This does not have a gasket. This has an O-ring that sits in a groove. Okay. Um, there are five or six bolts that hold it on the car, and one bolt is a different size, so you put it back on the right way. It has also indexing pins. So this is a 5 16 bolt, the rest are all quarter inch bolts. This one has... That's the American standard mm -hmm. or British standard? Uh, it's American. It's, it's U.S. Uh, they, they pretty much got away from all the British standard when they, in the shadows. Mostly, there's still some British standard, usually fuel fittings or that, that way, but... Almost everything else is uh, just U.S. fine normally. Hardly any coarse threads. As you can see, there's some corrosion on this. Somebody has taken, punched this shaft here. And the tricky part about pulling this impeller, which you have to pull the impeller on this to get to the seal that you have to pry out to get to the snap ring to get the main shaft out so you can get to the two bearings. Here is the seal. The shadow had a rubber seal you just pushed in. This is a, uh, it's almost like a washing machine seal. Uh, this, this part of the inner part of it, there's a carbon uh, surface in there that turns and it's spring loaded. And this piece right here has to press over this shaft tightly. So if you try to just hammer this in like most seals, you will ruin it. You have to use a special pressing tool that this fits right over this and it presses the inner part along with the outer part at the same time without letting it pop apart. Now, these are getting harder to get. Where Most, do you buy the tool? I don't know. I was given this one. The parts to rebuild this if it's available from... Uh, I, my local dealerships did not have that seal. I had one overnighted from uh, Bentley Zionsville. Okay. They had one on the shelf. He said, the Chris, the guy, he says they don't even, they only keep one on the shelf because they don't sell them that much. They have rebuilders that just rebuild these. Right, so that, that, yeah. On something like this, there's a lot of aftermarket rebuilders that do all kinds of generic stuff and they source seals that'll work and, and bearings. The bearings are pretty simple on this. These are just uh, fag bearings. But uh, they're just uh, double, uh, they're just sealed roller bearings. You can get these. Standard Pretty standard bearings, yes. All right, so to pull this impeller, we have to, like I said, we have to pull this impeller. Uh, we might have some trouble because, as I said, somebody has taken a punch and punched the end of this thing so it kind of mushrooms out to keep the impeller from falling off. What I have done in the past is I have this puller that uh, the impeller itself has threads. I'm going to run a tap through there just so they clean them up. It's normally a 5 16 24, unless the holes have been damaged, then I can do something else. What triggered the rebuild, the, the bearing or the Leak. water leak? It was leaking. Okay. Usually it's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Usually what happens is the seal will go bad and it'll wash all the grease out of the bearing. Why is this off that 4 inch over there? This white one right behind you. I didn't see that. Yeah. All right, so. Ronnie, I've heard when the seal goes bad, they leak faster than most other cars. Uh, not on this particular seal. On the shadows, yes. It's a rubber seal, and it has a spring in it with the carbon face, but it's, it's really, it's just like a, 
it's almost like a balloon and it gets compressed and and average lifespan on a water pump for a early very early spirit I think and then shadows and all those that series is even the cloud twos and threes had the same seal um, seven years that's about it they just give up all right so did you have to pull the radiator to get this out no I didn't So what I'm doing now is there's two threaded holes in here that are 5 16 24. I'm just running it since they were full of rust. I'm just running a tap through them so that my bolts will go in there. You don't want to go too far. It doesn't really matter, but you could ruin your tap if you bought them out. Is that a synthetic rubber seal or is that natural rubber? I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to remove this, you need to put the car up on the lift, or can you come in through the... Uh, I take it off from the top. You, I put it up on the lift because I pulled the calipers, plus I have to drain the radiator, obviously. Uh, and then there's one nut for an adjuster that's down below that is easier to get to. But other than that, you pull it off the top. you got to pull the fan off, all the belts off, the air pump comes out. Um, all right, so now my... Just two cap holes here? That's all there are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my bolts, go through the puller, and screw it in. Okay. Now, most pullers, if you can see there's a little dimple in the center, most pullers have a tapered point. To keep it that would be like this. Yes, it's to keep it centered. But what I've found is this shaft here is really soft. So if it's really tight and you put a tapered point in it, it mushrooms it and then when you pull the impeller off, it cracks it. I know that because I've been there. Um, so what I do on this one, I just use kind of an Allen bolt as a flat surface to try to keep it from doing that. So, so I'll get that started. And by the way, you can get these in all kinds of bearing manufacturers. I get these from McMaster like Car. The bearings are 6205, that's a standard number. I get the double sealed ones, so they have seals on both sides. 6205, and then the other one is a 6204. Uh, the seal, I haven't found an aftermarket source, and that's a Rolls-Royce number PG113059PA. So. You already told us four ways that you can screw this job up, and you haven't even started. I mean, this is the tricky stuff, then. As always. There are many pitfalls, and what I'm doing with you is I'm sharing pitfalls. Yep. Uh, where you can go wrong, and the way I learn those is by doing it. Now, I, that's, I do this for you guys more as an informational thing. I know some of you, I know Paul would not be afraid of doing this. He just wanted to discourage Paul me. is, uh, how many cars do you have now? I, I, I think I just passed you. I think I'm six. Oh, yeah. Well, do, you, do uh, parts cars count? Or? Oh, well, then I got more than that. <laughs> six. But you don't have, well, you have a shop that you teach at, so you're fortunate. Right. Uh, All right. So let's see. Grab a wrench. I'm up to nine right now. Oh, I'm not up to, I'm, you're ahead of me. Yeah. And how many do I drive? I can drive three right now. It's not bad. So anyways, here I got two bolts in there. You want them to be about the same height, otherwise your, your puller will be cockeyed. Um, so this is the tricky part. Those of you at home do not have air tools like I do, so sorry about that. You'd have to hold this and be careful, but I like the air tools because I have them. All right, here we go. Oops. Oh, As you can see, it started to move, and I had to make sure that my Allen bolt didn't go sideways, and I'll be pushing against this puller or the impeller, and then I'd damage that. thing I forgot to mention is you want to know how deep this impeller was. Yes. 
So when you press it back on, I don't believe this was in the right position. I think it was too far out. But um, there's a gap in here between this and that. Uh, more specifically, there's a gap between the front cover, because this fits into a cavity. Let me get the puller off. So if you look at this, you can see it's at an angle. So what you have is in the front cover, you have a cavity that pretty much matches that angle. In the center, there's a hole where it draws the fluid out and then it throws it out because of the direction of this. It spins it out in a centrifugal way. So if you have this too far away, you're going to have too much gap in here and you won't be able to pull as much fluid. And if you have it too close, it could bottom out and destroy the cover and cause you problems. Not super dangerous, critical either way. This, this is a pretty efficient pump. Not like the earlier, like the cloud is, is pretty critical. Uh, and even the uh, the early post wars, they have just delicate little impellers. So you got to make sure you get it just right. All right. 